Three days removed from uh, your big win, worldwide TV, and you're sweeping up the floor. Never could be too humble, you know what I mean? Everyone has to start from the ground up, so I always like to prepare my battlefield. So if I could have put the, the pad in on the UFC cage, I would, just to lay the land. Yeah, and I walk in as well, and you're uh, getting ready to teach kids. How, how old are the kids? Uh, what are they, from anywhere from 6 to 13? Yeah. Cool deal. Yeah. It's too hot out today. Everyone's at the beach and enjoying the day. Ah, you got a light group, huh? Yeah, I got like three kids, four kids today. Oh, Jesus. Gotta whip these kids into shape. <laughs> Screw the beach, let's go. <laughs> right? You can't become a UFC fighter this way. That's what I've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing your speech now. Hey, so uh, let's break down the fight a little bit. First of all, were you surprised that Nier, I was surprised, I don't know if you were, but that Nier came in and was like so upright the entire fight. He looked kind of stiff and I, I thought, not that he was easy to take down, but kind of was custom made for you. Yeah, you know, the, the plan, the, the two plans I would add, a plan A and a plan B. And uh, we never ever talk about plan C. But uh, plan A was to stand up with him and bang with him. I'd outbox him, not to stand out and see who's tougher, you know. And uh, I... Right off the bat, my boxing coach told me how to find out how tough he is. Jab to the face, jab to the belly, come right up top to the face with my right hand and give it everything I had, just throw it against the wind. And I hit him flush in the face and he looked at me like, was that it? <laughs> and then being a smart fighter, being with the Florians and, you know, I went right to plan B and that was to show him what East Coast wrestling is really all about and then let him know how tough I was on the floor. And if he could stop me, then plan C would kick in, but he couldn't. So, you know, he was just, you know, I, I went and shot in on him in the first round, and he just stood there. So I just grabbed his leg again, picked up, and threw him. So, I mean, he was a tough kid. He took a lot of punishment that fight, but just not a smart fighter, you know, yeah. just wanted to stand and bang. And I, I told him in the beginning, it's going to knock it. It's not to see who's tougher, it's to see who's smarter. I ended up winning that. Well, then the crazy thing was at the end of the fight, like the last minute, he was kind of effective. He finally got to his feet. He got you down a little bit. I think he bloodied up the side of your head. And it's like, well, why the hell didn't he try that the entire time? But I guess you nullified it. You know, I went for a mount again in the third round. And I had it. And he, you know, we were slippery. I had a little bit of blood on me from on his chest from, uh, from bleeding from my eye. And I just, you know, he moved real fast. My hips fell off him. And, uh, but the thing was, he started hitting me, and I, I wasn't gonna sit there and take the abuse. I grabbed his leg right away, tried to finish, push him against the cage, and then uh, I just sat there and just killed the time and let him hit me in the head with his elbow. So big win, you know, a uh, pretty big name, and he was coming off a big win, some pretty destructive wins. Uh, we'll look ahead to the future a little bit. What do you think of the uh, first of all the crowd? Could you, could you feel the or hear the? Uh, you said just about 300 people from the Jersey Shore there. Yeah, I had about 287 of my friends there that I was able to sell tickets for or to give them the opportunity to get tickets through me. And, uh, you know, I felt it when I went out there. I heard the crowd when uh, Bruce said my name and I heard them boo him. I heard some KP chants, Kurt chants, some Batman chants here and there. It was pretty cool. It was good to be home. Yeah. So what's it like with the, the gym and then kind of locally? You're a local guy. Uh, when you come back home after, especially making the, the pay-per-view, and uh, that was your first win on a pay-per-view. Does it make a big difference being on the actual televised card versus the undercard? Absolutely. It yeah. was a, I felt the difference. Um, I, I, immediately when I got into the cage, I felt like I was on TV. Yeah. So it definitely makes a difference, and uh, you know, definitely want to fight again on TV. And uh, before I start moving up in uh, in the ranks and stuff, and fighting someone like Josh Near for my third fight on TV to have to win that was a lot it was a huge adversity to me and I got through it so you know I wonder who I'm gonna get next or where that puts me in line and uh, but uh, still fighting you know still trying to see the next opponent is how about coming back home after being on TV awesome. you get a lot of calls and people coming a to see of, you and oh my a lot of calls I got like 200 Facebooks <laughs> I had text messages from numbers I don't even know who they are <laughs> you guys, got, I don't know who you guys are. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, uh, I don't know. Friends that I I don't talk to for years text me, you know, and uh, Facebook for everyone. Facebook is for people you know. I have a fan page on Facebook, so if I don't know you, I never met you, never had dinner with you, never had, went out for drinks with you. Guys, do me a favor and just go to the fan page. Go to MySpace, but the Facebook thing is just insane. 
hundreds and hundreds of people that I, I don't even know who you are. I'm not using Facebook <laughs> as a as a as a fan. I have a fan page. Fans, go to the Facebook. There you go. My wife and myself updated all the time. KurtPellegrino.com. So what'd you do the last couple of days? Because now you're back. It's Tuesday. You're back at work. You go eat somewhere. You have a favorite spot you go to. You know, I haven't really got the opportunity to eat. I had a stromboli. Nice. I had like 12 donuts. <laughs> 12 donuts. Uh, nice. I had like my first Pepsi. Didn't go well in my stomach. So uh, I'm going to go to Brazilian barbecue soon. There you go. That's what I'm really looking forward no to. No brewskis at one of the local uh, summer hangouts? No, I think tonight I'm going to I'm gonna do that. All right. I was just at uh, Paul's Tavern, so it was good to see all the rummies out at 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. what a crew over there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> man. They're there. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Absolutely. I'm starting to get ready to go out. Just... Enjoy my summer now. Yeah. Well, you know what's cool too? I noticed uh, I was reading one of the, the local uh, MMA magazines. There really is like a, a pretty big developing MMA community on the Jersey Shore now. It's gigantic. It's it's huge. I went to Applebee's with my wife yesterday. I signed three autographs, and it was the the early dinner. Yeah. Like four o'clock. Just kids being there, seeing me, seeing me on TV. It's you know the East Coast is huge, especially in this little neighborhood. Everyone and everyone. So you think so. it's just a matter of time? Once they get in New York, they start doing Boston, they go back to Philly, it's just going to explode here? UFC is so big, they, they don't even need to come here. They can have all their fights in Vegas and Portland and Minnesota. They can have it wherever they want. It's, the UFC is the biggest. It's an empire. I'll tell you what, Philly was we was nuts, man. It Those was fans. Awesome. I hope we go back there for the next fight and invite me. If there's a fight in Boston, yeah. guys, please put me on the card. I loved it. I take the train there, it'd be perfect. <laughs> so what do you think's next? Who who uh what kind of level would you want? Would you want to step back up to someone, you know, as high as like a Stevenson to get a second chance? Um, you know, I'm not looking to to fight for the title or for number one contender. If that's what Joe Silva and Dana White think that I'm at caliber of a, of a fighter, then yeah, I'm gonna step up to the plate. Um, I felt a lot of pressure, my first fight, my third fight on TV, uh, you know, it's different, I, I didn't think it would be a difference from an undercard to a, a, main, a, main, a main card fight, and there really was, I felt that pressure, so I would really like to get a fight that I think is would be a good fight um, to just build some more confidence up, you know what I mean, but who is there that I could build my confidence, you know, uh, uh, late, uh, Joe Lozon, he's he's tough. Yeah. You know. Would uh, you want another Jersey guy like a Jim Miller? Uh, Jim Miller, that's another tough fight. You know what I mean? So there's no really building confidence up. Yeah. Any one of those guys are, are, are tough. Uh, I'd like to fight Nate, Nate Diaz if he could beat Melvin Gillard. Um, that'd be a fight I would take. Um, I would I'd put you know whatever I would have to do for Joe Silva to give me that fight. I would love. Um, he'd be doing me a favor. And I think the fans, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, but that'd be a fight I would hold out for and wait two years for if I could without fighting. Well, let's get your comments on the uh, the two main events. First of all, Kenny, I know he's good friends with you, but uh, BJ, man, he was just he was tough to take down. Anytime they went to striking, uh, he was the better guy. And then once it went to the ground, he got to really grapple. He just took him out. BJ, you know, BJ's a stud, you know. And I think Kenny was the only guy at 155 pounds to do what he did. Um, I had BJ... I had, I had it even to the fourth round. Um, I know I was up doing ESPN and Randy Couture had said the same thing to me, so I know I wasn't being partial. I think it was going to come down to the fifth round, uh, who won the last, the last round would have won the bell. Um, but uh, Forrest Griffin's a tough guy and he fought, well, it looks like he's an unstoppable force in the UFC. Yeah, I mean at this point, when uh, when guys going against Silva, is there any sense in trying to strike with the guy at all? I mean, it, it, it seems to me like the only way to beat him is to get him to the ground. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that was ridiculous. He could he couldn't catch him, and you could just see he mentally broke like a minute into the fight. You start on your feet, so you gotta you gotta find a way to strike with him, put him to his back. You know? Can you think of anyone who can strike with him, or does it have to? Is it gonna have to be someone like a Henderson or Dan another wrestler? Hen Dan the Man Henderson, in my eyes, who's my hero. Yeah. So. Hopefully he can do it, but you know, I'm a type of guy I don't like to see champions lose. So, uh, hopefully Anderson Silva can be the champion forever. You know, In my eyes a champion is what makes the sport so good. I don't like to see the belt being passed around too much. All right. So when do you think you're back? What would you? When would you like to come back? I don't know. Five, five, five months, six months. Let my body heal. Yeah. Heal. Yeah. So, so maybe December, January. Yeah, I think so. All right. Good deal. Good luck with the gym and. Uh, 
have fun uh, taking in all the uh, the adulation from the Jersey Shore fans. Thank you guys so much. Thank you UFC. Thank you fans.